Hey guys, <coughs> let's do that again. Hey guys, Clums here. Welcome back, welcome back. Flying today. X plane. Eleven. How is everybody doing? Thank you for joining me. Who do we have on chat? <laughs> Tadius, thanks for joining, man. <laughs> Glad you could make it. Quite late there, huh? AJ. As always, good morning and Scotsman the ever first. <laughs> Flying the ever first Scotsman. <laughs> I, think, I think we should call, it, call you that. Ada, thanks for joining, man. And Joey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for dropping by. No worries. Good evening, Alex. Glad you made it. Were you in Jack's stream? Icing conditions. Is it? It might be. That's true. I uh, am trying to test it out, but I'm I'm kind of hoping that I won't need it. But yeah, we'll see. Gone again. Yeah, I caught a cold uh, yesterday, the other day. The sudden changes on temperature here, <laughs> from very hot to super hot. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Barry. Good morning. Thanks for joining. 54 kilometer bike ride. Nice. How long does that take? <laughs> yeah, my throat is encountering icing conditions. That's true. Started watching me with the tour bus sim and got hooked. Nice. I should get back to that soon. I haven't checked out the the new plane yet. The new plane, the new bus yet. Four to five hours, wow. You thought it's Tuesday. <laughs> well, we're in the same time zone, right? We should be in the same time zone at least. So, for today, we are flying from... Uh, do you guys remember the airport from last stream? Juno, in Alaska. Where we almost encountered a... Uh, <laughs> the equivalent of the volcano back in Tenerife. Was it in Tenerife? Yeah, but we almost hit a mountain <laughs> because the runway was apparently not suited for that kind of landing. Uh, but we, we avoided it. We landed safely. And now we're back here and we're going to make our way to Canada today. Canada? Scotsman represent. I'm not familiar with the place, but you guys might be able to help me. It's somewhere in Edmonton, if I remember correctly. Because I saw a flight in uh, FS Economy and I had to take it. Hey, Moonser. Glad you made it, man. Thanks for joining. Hey, thanks for becoming a patron. Just checked it. 17 degrees Celsius temperature on the ground. Oh, yeah. I was kind of hoping for some icing conditions because uh, I wanted to test out the new version. I downloaded an, an update for uh, Zebo 737, this plane. It's in release candidate 3 now. It's 3.1. It now has some icing, uh, the icing uh, functionalities. Like if you go to the uh, the tablet, there should be a thing now. Ground services now contains the the icing procedure, where some uh, trucks, the icing trucks will be posted. Maybe we can check it out. We can simulate it at least. Yeah, we can try. When do I usually go live? Wednesday and Friday, 8 a.m. my time. Uh, where are you from? If you're from the U.S., Eastern is probably something you can relate to, Eastern time. That's around 8 p.m. Tuesday and Thursday. Although, this weekend, guys, this week, uh, there will be no clumsy trucking, unfortunately. No Friday stream. Because uh, we'll be going somewhere, hopefully. Hopefully it pushes through. Uh, just here in Singapore, but if it pushes through, I'll uh, I'll share some uh, some pics. You guys might like it. New York. Ah, okay, all right. So yes, Eastern Time is very relatable to you. Nice. So yes, 8 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday, but the, this week no Thursday. Might be flying for the first time in four years. Nice. Well, uh, stay safe. Hope you enjoy it. Get a window seat. 
same time where you, me and Yun are at. I'm actually, it's actually 8 a.m. my time. I'm from Singapore, so quite uh, <laughs> quite far away, but same number, just different uh, morning, evening. At least for now, with the daylight shift, daylight saving time shift. Okay, but yes, let's go ahead and start. So for those who are uh, using FS Economy, I found some pretty cool stuff. Apparently, it's part of the official X Economy client. So the, the thing that connects Xplain to FS Economy site. Apparently, there are other utilities that can be downloaded. It's part of the official package. And this, there is one particular tool where you can actually specify your fuel tanks. If you guys remember, there is this quite there is this irritating thing about FS economy that when you're taking jobs, it always fills up the center tank first. When normally, the normal procedure should fill up the uh, wings, the tanks on the wings first, the center last, and then use up the center first. So apparently there is a, a plugin a few tanks config option where you can do that and it will detect all the tanks in the plane and then you can specify the priority so for our case I put uh, priority 0 which is the highest for the wings and then priority 1 on the center so that means whenever I load something it should fill up the wings first and that will simulate the correct loading and uh, balance so what we can do here is I can actually go to and there's also the FSE interface it it's uh, just a an easier way to connect it pops up it shows you the available time left so it's it's uh, just a better display of FS economy interface so you can log in from here start the flight that gives us seven hours to complete this job that should be more than enough and we loaded two eight six seven gallons of fuel so even if it did load, you can see that uh, it filled up the wings first and there's just a little bit of smidge on the center. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> Air Serbia or Alitalia? I have never heard of those airlines. Are they good? Man of the future. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Joey. Appreciate that, really. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So the fuel tanks is an option. Very useful for this kind of scenario. So it's more realistic. <laughs> there is a GPU. Yes, it's a ground power unit though. It's not a graphics uh, processing unit. And we'll actually need that to show that to you. That's exactly how uh, it's drawn here. If uh, So now you don't see it. Yeah. And if I connect that, now you do. Was there actually a sound? It actually has a sound of its own, I think. I think that's new. Didn't notice that before. But that's basically powering up the plane. So that helps the plane get a get a boost, get started. Right? <clears throat> so the fuel weight and balance and also I've been watching Flight Deck to Sim. Of course, I think everyone who flies a 737 in the sim watches Flight Deck to Sim. Because he's a real pilot, a real 737 captain, and he also streams and makes videos and fl flies and uh, uses X-Plane. So the best practice we all learned from him. <laughs> so chances are if you're watching this, you're probably, you probably know him. If you don't, then uh, yeah, he sees that guy. So what I learned from him is you can actually use the pop-up tablet to help. And um, so we have a flight from Juno to Edmonton and I already set up the flight in Simbrief. I downloaded the PDF charts, the, the flight plan. So we can actually use that here, display that here. So everything is here and it, you don't have to like switch windows and stuff. So it's very convenient. Page 3 contains the weights and I'll just be comparing them. Normally this is not the same. Yeah, the payload is very different, look at that. So the takeoff weight is also very different. So I'll just need to adjust this manually. Because there's a bit of desync with FS Economy and Simbrief, but it's not that's no problem. So we wait for a few seconds to for the takeoff weight to adjust. That should be 140.3, that's a bit too much. 
view will is also a bit higher, but that's fine. 19.5. There we go. Now takeoff weight is exactly the same. So we should be good with that. <clears throat> 2080 Ti Power Connect. <laughs> if, if the GPUs were that large, huh? Yeah, that will be pretty challenging. Alright. Air Survey used to be a jet and is part of the Etihad group. Ah, Etihad, that one I know. I see. Alitalia is the flagship airline for Italy. Makes sense. He's flying for Ryanair. <laughs> is Ryanair the swift of uh, aviation? <laughs> Goodness, I've heard many things about Ryanair. Uh, not many good things. And by the way, I've been watching the EasyJet series on YouTube. It's very nice. I'm on episode 3 now. It's so good. It's very casual, so it's not very technical. But it gives you a very good glimpse on the aviation industry. It's so nice. <clears throat> okay, and of course, I still have the ever so trusty checklist. <laughs> Some of you might call it cheaty, but I'll take every help I can get. And I'll just breeze through this. I won't explain all the details anymore, just so we won't get information overload. So for those who want specific explanations on certain parts, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just be breezing through them and won't explain everything in detail because I'm sure some of you have heard this time and time again. And it might get a bit repetitive. Right. <clears throat> let me just start up the plane. Gear lights are okay. Six green. GPU. So the thing that's connected outside, we use it now. We power the plane on using the GPU, the ground power unit. And now we have power. Let's set the lighting here. Enable the lights. Pumps. You can also do some fire tests. Looks good. Fasten seatbelts. And attend. Very familiar sounds, huh? Very familiar sounds if you've flown a, on a plane before. I like it. Cargo fire test. <clears throat> good. <laughs> Did you not uh, continue with that purchase, Alex? The GPU that costs like an entire PC. Try watching a very British airline about uh, British Airways, is it? VA? I haven't watched season 1 yet. I think there are two seasons already of that EasyJet series, right? Very nice. Really enjoy that. It's like the Eddie Stobart but for flying. I really like that. Gives you an, a good uh, overview of uh, what's happening behind the scenes. Let me do some checks here. Bear with me. Just checking that the lights and everything are working. By the way, yes, as I mentioned, I, I'm with the latest public version of the... Zebo mod, so it's release candidate 3.1. There were some problem with the the icing before. <laughs> Good thing we didn't experience that. But apparently before the wing, the ice wasn't working. <clears throat> right, let's get the altimeter settings in here. Uh, Juno is pageant. Uh, wrong spelling, wrong. Come on, type correctly. Yeah, because my keyboard is away from me, so I, it's easier for me to just click on it. Minus RA means light rain, but the visibility is still good 10 statute miles. So, visibility is good, but there's light rain, and these are clouds in here. So at 2,100, 4,600, 6,500, and uh, 20,000 feet, there are different kinds of clouds. That's the temperature, that's altimeter setting, that's what I want. 3010. Zero, zero. So let's go and set that here. 3010. Zero, zero. 
set that also in the standby altimeter over here, this small thing. <clears throat> and minimums, uh, minimums is uh, I think the airport elevation plus 1000, so that's 1024 in our case. We also set that. That's when we put our flaps up, I believe. One sec, it is kind of fidgety though, it's kind of hard to tinker with these controls. And now uh, with the update, the scroll wheel has a different logic, like the harder you scroll, the faster it goes. Sometimes it's a bit um, confusing still. <coughs> okay, that looks good. Yeah, let's test the oxygen. Yeah, sounding pretty good. Now this airspeed, for some reason, is not working for me every time. Now it's working, good. The clackers. That horn, good. So that uh, gives a warning when you don't have the correct takeoff settings yet. And we're just testing that it uh, does indeed work. That's the first officer. <coughs> Downpour yesterday. Ooh. Must have been pretty drenched. Hope you're still feeling fine today. Skip that. That's the first officer's uh, job. And these sounds we never want to hear in the actual flight. Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Terrain. TMI. <laughs> Thanks for the host, Da. Alright. So this is where I learned something from Flight Deck to Sim. That you can actually use this. Leverage this. To look at the flight plan in the same window. So we don't have to switch to and from. Yeah, but first let's just compare model nav data. From last week we had an outdated nav data, right? A day after the stream I got an update on the nav data. So it's now a 1906. <coughs> so we are good there again, up to date. And we do have an update on the Navigraphs uh, app. Uh, I'll show that in a bit. Uh, I'll just plug these guys in. Actually, it's perfect that I plug this in before we set this up because this is the routing. Good. That should pop up now. I also downloaded the real PFD mod. That just changes the colors a bit, makes it more realistic because the original from Zebo is a bit darker and less realistic. So this does just increases the immersion even more and I like it. Thanks to the, oh, who was it who recommended? Someone recommended it over YouTube, so I tried it out. It's quite nice. All right, so let me show you the Navigraph update. Sure thing that, you can even drag the real tab bit close to the FMS. Yes, you can, but it's I think it's a bit limited, the dragging. I also saw it from him, like you can click here, that unlocks the tablet, and then you can drag it like that. The thing though is it's a bit hard to like, rotate it and stuff so it's going to be a bit more challenging to align although if you can do that that's definitely more realistic like here how do you drag that guy all the way through yeah it's a bit limited the range that's possible <laughs> so maybe we'll have to like do that and like zoom out yeah that can work i guess i guess that can work somehow like ah probably like that huh I'm not sure what is the ideal place, but yeah, that can work too. But yeah, for, for us, I think we can settle with the floating thing. It's less realistic, but it's very functional. It's so nice though, having that kind of feature. So cool. Right, let me show you the Navigraph update. It looked better on his stream. <laughs> for sure, he knows better how to, to uh, tweak with that, the best uh, angle. Because he's working directly with Zebo. <clears throat> we can hide the yoke actually, but um, doesn't change the angle that is 
allowable for this tablet. So it's still a bit, uh, how do you say? Yeah, maybe that way. Maybe that can work. If I do that, I zoom out a bit. I can see it already. Is that, does that work? Mm. It does look a lot more real. If I can find an angle, I'll probably watch some more of his streams, get some more best practices. But until then, let's uh, settle for the 2D thing. Wait, wait, and let me go and switch to the Navigraph now, so we can check it out. It's super cool. The updates are really what I've been waiting for. <clears throat> Newer windshield effects. I uh, haven't noticed uh, which ones. The rain? I didn't notice a difference actually. Let's check it out in a bit. Alright, here we go. So Navigraph charts. From the get-go, what I really like is there's now a built-in integration with SimBrief. So if you go to flights, in here you normally could create something new flight and plug the numbers in the the destinations in but you can actually now synchronize as well from simbrief and just have to enter your username you don't even have to enter your password which is a bit weird maybe the, it's establishes some kind of connection already because i have simbrief connected to the navigraph and then it detects that the latest ofp is that operational flight plan is this this uh, Juno to Edmonton. So it loads that, loads everything, and you see it everything in one go. I think this is also new. The world map is now available. You don't have to stick to the charts, so you can have a visual feel of where you're really flying to. So that's our departure. If you guys remember, there were mountains all the way here, right? To the east of the airport, and we were coming from here last stream. And we had to make a U-turn somewhere, and it's a bit scary. But yeah, so now the, the official departure will be uh, departing from runway 8, and we'll be making a loop here, facing the other way. Loop all the way around, and uh, proceed from there, headed east. So we can't just go east directly, because there will be pretty some, some pretty high mountains that might be dangerous. Right? What's also cool about this update is it helps you with planning. So if you don't have SimBrief or if you're not working with SimBrief, you can make your own flight plans. And it's possible to actually get a visual feel of all the SIDs and stars. It's very nice. Like, how, how do you do that? Let me see. If I go and check this one out, and if I look at, for example, uh, departure. So I have a list of all the runways, list of all the departures. And then I can say, show visual overview. So this blacks everything out and it actually shows you all the SIDs and where they lead. So the green and red, this one has only two. So Juno 5 or Assort 2 and it gives you all the possible directions so you have an idea already which one you would like, which one would fit better for your case. Yeah. It also, there's also an auto route function where it builds the route from scratch based on the shortest distance I think. I have tested it a bit, just a bit and it's not the best so far. But I think it depends on the scenario. You also get the list of the entire route here at the top. So from the airport, the runway, the SID, all the, the nav aids, the airways that we're going through, the arrival. So you can easily get a visual feel of uh, where you're going. And it, this is just very, very nice. So that's there. And we can also plan the the runway so if I go if I can enable moving maps it should work so we see where we are currently in the sim that's where we are that's where we're facing and that will update in real time we also have arrivals so we can see all the stars for Edmonton we are using the SK2 I believe yeah SK2 arrival but there are others as well. We can go with Tetag 2. And it depends. We are going with runway 20 this time. So we're actually moving here. Yeah, turning left instead of right. Because runway 2, I think, is. 
Yeah, runway 2 is turning right here in SK2. Runway 2-0, we turn left and place ourselves, line ourselves up for the runway. Very nice visual feel. And then the approach. So we are going with runway 2-0. You can also get a visual overview. Runway 2-0, the different approaches. We have RNAV. We don't have ILS here, okay. I'm not so used about to uh, with RNAV, but we'll see. <coughs> runway 2-0, it looks like that fits very well with uh, the SK-2 star. So RNAV Y looks like it fits better for us. Should be, yeah. Let's see. So RNAV Y, it also is... Uh, I think also the sorting here, there's also some logic in it that it puts the more appropriate uh, procedure at the top so you don't have to scroll through everything. So it's quite smart. So here we go runway 2-0. Yeah, we can go with RNAV. And then we can select a transition. <clears throat> We close that. Mm -hmm. Runway to zero. That's the one. Umiba. Is exactly where we want to go. Umiba from Neski 2 looping around like that. And what's cool about this, you can even overlay it. Windows 10 May 2019. I'm not sure if it did something. Probably not yet because uh, nothing went wrong yet. <laughs> okay, and the, the cool thing about this, the new feature, there's actually an overlay feature now where it overlays the actual chart on the map so it get exactly where you are and you can change the, uh, the, the opacity. Yeah, you can show the waypoints. It's super cool. It just gives you a great uh, situational awareness of where you're really going. And then you can go to the full screen if you need more details. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's amazing. Let's add that to the route. Runway 20 RNAV Y. Yeah, so the The flight plan now has the RNAV Y runway 20 RNAV Yankee. Good. So that's basically what it has. It's quite useful, especially when you need to study charts and stuff. Um, and there are also the links to charts. Where is it? I think you can somehow. Like you can show the chart or you can overlay it. Also here, open charts list. And we can do the same thing. We can pin stuff at the bottom so we have uh, easy access to them. Juno 5. We can close that and then you can use from here. So it's very easy to see. 085, okay. Yeah, that's basically how it goes. Looks pretty cool. Very fancy. And all of that is actually available in the mobile as well. In iPad, in iOS, it's not yet, but in Android, it is updated. So they updated it to look very similar. Um, quite same logic. Actually very nice. And let me show you how it looks. So I can actually look at it from my mobile and plan something, even when I'm away from the PC. show you how it looks yeah so something like that <clears throat> I don't think it's visible huh but you can imagine it <laughs> it's exactly the same just a different screen size so cool so I'm definitely going to subscribe to that yearly subscription once my month runs out 
mainly Navy Graph stuff. <coughs> we'll uh, check it out again later. Right, but for now, let's do that thing where we plot the route. Yeah, and this is just so uh, convenient. No alt tabbing necessary. Okay, so we go. Didn't I click this already? Did I reset it? Wait a minute, let me see. Okay. Pause in it. Yeah, we are okay there. Alright, that's just the root reset, that's fine. Alright. Departing runway 8. Via Juno 5, Sid. To via EEF. Echo Echo Foxtrot. Direct to Metum. <clears throat> Is that an airway? NCA 10. Not familiar with the naming convention here. I think that's in Canada. To YQU. Direct to Eski. And from there we move to the approach. Eski to approach. And Arnav Yankee. Two zero. That's the one. Uh, which uh, transition was that? We have a look here again. Um, Umiba. Okay, Umiba. Umiba it is. All right. There's a bit of a bug right now. I think I'm not sure if it's really a bug or a feature. But you cannot actually go to the legs page until you activate the route. And that's that's known already. Or a lot of people have uh, um, commented that. So there you go. Now we can look at the legs page. We'll verify that later. We'll compare that with the charts if everything is correct. But for now, that should be good. Go back to the checklist. Route. Everything should be fine. Uh, what I missed though is the flight number. This is flight clumsy002. <laughs> there you go. The route is activated. Good. Let's go back here. Zero fuel weight. Reserves. Well, we can check again against here. Should be in page one. And we basically add up the alternate and the fin rest, right? 5.4. Round it up, 5.5. So that's 5,500 pounds. I'm using pounds. <coughs> Cost index is 29. Coming from there. And flight level 380. That's the one here. That's the cruising altitude. And the uh, cruising wind, we use the top of climb winds so that we get an accurate estimate of when where the top of climb is. 268, 25 knots. No ISA deviation. So that looks good. Right? The descent forecast um, is in page 5, I think or six depending on the flight plan that's the one and this one i'm not so sure how to use so i'm just going to plug three numbers in three five zero two hundred and one hundred because you can only put three i'm just going to plug in these values three four one two nine yeah when you watch the videos like the easy jet um, What's the name of the series again? Uh, it looks it all looks so simple. Like they sit on the cockpit, they uh, do some some stuff for five minutes, and they're ready to take off. <laughs> so so many things happening behind the scenes. It's amazing. Okay. <clears throat> what I like to do as well is the fix. 
put a fix in so we know when we're close to our destination. So we are arriving via runway 28. Wait a minute. That's runway. That, that's the wrong. Am, did I just load the wrong chart, guys? I think I loaded the wrong chart. Dang it. Why did that change? Yeah, that one's still right. When did I change the charts? That's weird. Does that mean I have to change everything again? Okay, let's double check. <coughs> yeah, that's way different. 74. Maybe checking the right flight plan is essential. Uh, but probably when I s click this one, yeah, I, I hit the wrong button. It switched to a different flight plan instead of a different page. That's probably the one. Yeah, this is quite confusing, these buttons. Have to get used to that. 201.58. There you go. And that's uh, positive 2. Alright. Here we have still 350, 210,000, but very different values. My goodness, that will really change the estimates. Uh, 089. Doesn't like two digits. Zero nine one one eight. Are we in the right flight plan now? I hope. Yeah, it looks like. And three three nine ten knots. Good. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Shoo. <coughs> yes. <laughs> Almost. Almost. What I also missed is the setting the average winds. So we go to the legs page, route data, and we look at the top of climb, which is Smitom. The winds here we change based on the average wind, which is 192, 31 knots. And that changes all the values moving forward. That just helps with the more correct estimation for the fuel and stuff. Right, uh, fix. Yes, that's what I wanted. That's where I noticed that we had a different thing. That's the one. Runway two zero. So runway two zero. I'd like. I like putting in like uh, when we're ten miles away, when we're five miles away, and when we're three miles away. We get a visual indicator, a radial uh, distance marker, to say that we're that close or that far away from the runway very useful because that's when I know that I have to con start configuring for landing and stuff like that all right now we go and open the service doors cargo doors and we start the service crews yeah there you go all right Let's have a look at outside. The doors are open. Look at these guys. <laughs> I think they're uh, treading lightly because they know they're near me. Yo, damper. <clears throat> All fuel pumps on because we have a few, a little fuel in the center pump, in the center tank. Yeah, 2,000 pounds. So that's 16,000, 18,000, 19,000, 20, something like that. That should be pretty consistent with what we have in the flight plan. Yeah, 19,200 block fuel. Good. Check cross feed is working. All right. Window heat. Looks good. Trim air. Set these up for optimal temperature. 
for our passengers. Max, we are flying at 370, I think. Is it? And then let's go here. Check Edmonton. And it is actually 2373 feet above sea level. 2373, okay. So that's 2373. 2-4. Round to the nearest 50. To the next 50. Wheel well lights can go off. Wing lights not needed. Logo lights no, not necessary. Okay, looks good. We had switch on the flight directors. Bank angle to 25. If I remember correctly, the heading was 81. Let me double check. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go and check the airport. We'll need that anyway. Eighty-five, my bad. Eighty-five degrees. And then let's go and check the charts. We can also do this in Navigraph. But this one is integrated with Navigraph anyway. And we'll need to use this anyway later. So Juno 5, that's where we are. We'll be taking off from runway 8, looping around, and then moving on. But is there an initial altitude? Initial climb, there we go. Climbing right turn as soon as practical <laughs> to avoid the mountains. Climb in visual conditions, direct CGL. Where is CGL? Kogelin, that one, that you are. Okay. West course at or above 1000. Mm-hmm. It's not really specific altitude that's mentioned. It just says at or above 1000 by the time we hit Coquelin. So let's just put in an arbitrary number, maybe 5000 for now. Yeah, that should be good. Yes, let's go and test the de-icing, even if it's 15 degrees Celsius. I do want to see it as well. <clears throat> when do you usually do that? When is that, when is that done? I'm guessing we're, we're still at the stand, right? Right before we push back. Because I think that the icing only lasts for like 15 minutes or something like that. So it should be right pretty, right before we depart. And we heading, initial climb. Rejected takeoff. Reset. Check the oil pressure. Very good. That back. Let's get these guys to stop. We are going to start boarding the passengers now. Let's open the doors. Let them in. Let mayhem ensue. Uh, good. Start the flight leg. Okay, now we check the routing. <laughs> and let's double check that everything is still aligned with the flight plan. <coughs> So let's check the legs. Let's go to plan mode. Alright, it is it does look consistent. That loop there towards uh Coglan. Right? So we climb to 430 feet, then loop around to Coglan, and then Barlow. Where's Barlow then? And then elephant. Yes. And then from there, we turn and go straight to Mitum. Also with the update, with the Zebo, you actually see the magenta line now curving. It's not anymore going straight to the waypoint. It's showing how the plane will actually turn when it reaches that point. It's quite nice. Okay. That's more or less straightforward, and then we go into Eski. 
Hey, Synth. Thanks for joining, man. How have you been doing? What have you been up to? They're in different fluids with different parameters. Ah. Nice. Yeah, I heard there are different kinds, but I have no idea what they're for. I guess they would vary in intensity and uh, the duration, the length, and it's valid. Okay, that looks the same as what we've planned, right? Upkit. Uh, Mesdi Epsul Umiba, that's the one. Yeah. Uh huh. Tudko. Okay, that might be different. Okay. Because we'll be passing direct to Lidor. And then we'll be going back vectors to Umiba. So what I'll do is I'll just go straight there to Umiba. So we don't loop around anymore. You see that straight line? Instead of doing, having that straight line, we make that u turn immediately. So we remove that uh, inconsistency. Yeah, so it, well now it's more fluid. And now you can see as well the 10, 5, and 3 meter fixes that I put in. So that's a very good uh, visual feel. Okay, looks good. And from there, we should be arriving at runway 20 if everything holds the same in terms of weather. We'll check later as we come across later. Okay, that looks good. All right. Switch that. Okay, now I guess we can. Everybody should be on board. I think the lady helped us and said that everybody is. So let's close the doors. Let's make the announcement. Folks from the cockpit, I'd like to welcome you on board. We're ready up front. Everybody's closed up outside and we're just waiting now. Uh, Get some of our uh, performance numbers and uh, the clearance from uh, air traffic control, and we should be underway. It's our pleasure, uh, pleasure having you on board with us today. Sit back, relax, uh, enjoy the flight. Should be underway here shortly. Thanks for flying with Delta today. There we go. Delta. Not sure if Delta has flights here. <laughs> we'll let it pass. <clears throat> what I found is this uh, takeoff and landing performance calculator. Let me show you. There you go. It's actually pretty useful. So we can derate the engines. We don't always go full power. We only put enough thrust to allow us to uh, take off given our weight, given the length of the runway and the weather conditions. And this is free. That's the best thing about it. <laughs> There's a specific profile for Zebo 737. I was previously using this one default, but apparently Zebos is quite different. So it's a def different profile for downloading that. If you, and if you guys want to check this out, as always, mods list link, uh, exclamation point mods, or if you're watching this in YouTube, uh, it's in the video description. Go and check it out. There's a link there to the APSoft Airplane Toolbox. Takeoff performance. There you go. So we put in our takeoff weight, which is 140.3. That's 140,300. We put in the Ikeo code of the airport, which is Papa Alpha Juliet November. And then we'll be getting the weather information. Now that does not seem consistent. Yeah, there's a bit of inconsistency happening because this one is getting the real weather and x has a bit of a delay. So with us, the winds are actually 090 at 5. This one is very different. So I think I'll have to change that manually. So 090 at 5. And uh, let me see. Altimeter 3009, that's true. Now the weather is 15, 15 degrees Celsius. Let's change that. And it's not really dry. I'm guessing there's light rain. Yeah, light rain. That's the one. But if it's... Is that automatically... Is that automatically the case? If it's light rain, it's already wet? I'm guessing so, right? Let's do that. And let's see what it gives us. So from here we can calculate and what, the, what this will give us is we can actually go flaps 5, we can derate the engines to 24, K 
k instead of 26k but we don't have a selected temperature okay so let me just put this here about become a zebo specialist <laughs> do a barrel roll <laughs> thanks yeah i'm really liking it i'm liking getting into the weeds the, the details learning a lot from flight tech to sim as well right so let me remove that for you guys i have it in my notes anyway <clears throat> been doing pretty well since sorry i missed that haven't been trucking lately caught up in slime rancher ah i've heard about that some people really like that i didn't get a chance to try it though has there been a lot of updates since then i think last time i saw it was like i don't know four years ago three years ago okay it says trust the rate to 24k so that should reduce the thrust the n1 thrust instead of 98.5 percent it becomes 94.3 that will become even lower as we enable the apu i think by 0.7 or something don't ask me why selected temperature we don't really have anything set there so we're not going to set anything that will derate the engines more so that will like simulate that instead of 15 degrees you have like i don't know for example 50 50 degrees so that will lessen the performance even more but for our case we should not be using that all right so that should be good enough already flaps 5 it says center of gravity set that in and if i compare the speeds quite the same except v1 is 128 this is very different the vr and v2 are the same so let's take that but v1 let's put in at 128 okay <coughs> that looks good let's set the v2 speed 146 okay good right calculation is done t rate set trim value is good all right now we can close the door get ready start the apu and while that's setting up let's go ahead and plan the pushback or actually let's start the ice let's check it out start the icing So that should make these guys appear and they should start the de-icing process that looks so cool doesn't it <laughs> pretty intense oh that is so nice i wonder if it will have like a real like a big effect we'll probably be able to test that come uh, winter so not for a few uh, months yet I'm not sure if they stop in their own though or if I need to like uh, stop them manually in the meantime let's go and plan for the better pushback let me just double check where we are there we are so we should be facing left if we're taking off runway 8 yes yes so better push back pre-plan let's go ahead and get ourselves lined up here facing left that should be more or less good right on the line uh, taxiway all right captain got the directions let me know through the menu when you're ready good let's go and request that already because it's uh, going to take a while for Great him news, to line up captain your toes coming all right and the guys are i don't think they will finish i think we'll have to stop that manually so let's do that uh -huh. stop the icing and they should be magically disappearing <laughs> love it okay good there he is but we still have a few things to do let me get back to the checklist now we start, start switching on the APU, start APU bleed, turn off, remove the GPU. 
chimes. We will start contacting ATC now. I'm going to All skip right. that part. Looks like doors and hatches are closed, and we're ready to connect. Thank you. <clears throat> but maybe I can try and simulate it. Uh, Juno, clumsy 002. Request clearance to Edmonton. And then they'll reply with something like, uh, uh, I don't know, what kind of departure we, do we have? By the Juno 5 departure, and then has filed. Something like that. Squawk, yada yada. Initial altitude 5000, expect filed flight level 10 minutes after. Something like that. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toes connected, bypass pens inserted. Go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. And then push back, I believe, at least in the US, is uh, on our own. We don't need to request push and start. So we can already start that in. But Here let's comes the pushback. Light them up. Turn on the anti collision lights and now let us uh, have a look outside. But maybe let's start the engine first. Let's uh, turn off the air conditioning packs. And now we can start engine 2. That should start spooling now, bit by bit. Looking good, sounding pretty good. And at 25% N2, we introduce fuel. And we enjoy the sounds. Look at that car, grip car! <laughs> Why is there a road right next to the taxiway? Or am I not on the taxiway? Rip. Hey Foxman. Or uh, should it be Foman? Thank you for joining. How are you? <coughs> Sorry for the delayed reply there. Getting a bit caught up in the, uh, the stuff here. Okay, that looks good. Look left, clear, start engine 1. Start enjoying the sounds again. Yeah, those trucks are just waiting behind us. I love it. Even the speed of the just about done here. Go fan and set your parking brake. is simulated. It's so nice. Set parking brake. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. Give that guy some fuel. EGT climbing. N1 climbing. There we go. Switch reset. Starter cutoff. And now we can turn off the display. We're good. Thank you for the pushback. Now we can turn on the generators for the engine. Turn off the APU. Not you. Turn off the APU. Switch to continuous. And now we can turn on the probe heats. Bring back the air conditioning. And we're disconnected. Signal pin on the auto. right. Take it easy and APU have a safe flight. Off. Okay, we're good there. <clears throat> what did they say? Right, right? Okay, right. Flaps, flight controls. Where's my yoke? My yoke is missing, guys. <laughs> there we go. Just adjust this a bit. Is he there? There he is. Bypass pin, good. Rather left, rather right. And we are good to go. Not you, you. What's the recall for? Does anyone know? Why do you have to like click it and unclick it? Why is it part of the checklist? Is it just to like refresh that there is no warning? Make sure that there is no warning. Okay, so we contact ATC. Juno ground, clumsy 002. Ready for taxi. And then they'll say something like, uh, taxi via... 
Bravo 2 Alpha and Bravo Runway 8 something like that good to go lights, brakes chimes LNAV auto throttle and cabin lighting for takeoff so many things to do huh these guys weather airport why are you guys driving so close to me are we that close terrain on the pilot monitoring side Oh, that's a bit weird. Weather is not working. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know now. We're still in plan mode. That happened to me a couple of times already. <coughs> now, I think we go here. Yeah, Alpha. That recall must be pushing six buttons. Aircon overhead <coughs> yeah because here it's like ah okay so what what is it for so you so you, they press this and that presses six buttons behind something like that set the transponder No, not the moment. Still a bit uh, getting comfortable with the plane, but I'm simulating the calls just so I have a bit of practice. I do love the sounds though. So good. Even the so minor details are modeled in. Love it. Let's go and turn on our strobes. Oi! Going beyond! That's the problem when you look at a different thing. Okay. So let's hold short here. <coughs> Why am I sliding? Alright. There we go. So now we say... Tower, clumsy 002. Ready for departure, holding short runway 8. Start the timer. Let's assume that they gave us clearance to take off. Just downloading the Zebo is an adventure. <laughs> hey Trevor. Yeah, I even downloaded the Zebo up updater someone made to activate the stuff. So cool. We are heading to Canada. Edmonton. Are you familiar with the place? You have to be our tour guide right now. 40% thrust. And then we go Toga. Canada! <laughs> yeah, Canada. 80 knots. So you look, you look at those mountains, they look very familiar. D1, D1. Rotate. Rotate. Positive rate. Positive rate. There we go. Turn right. 400. Avoid those mountains. There we go. And we'll bring the pla flaps up with the dust. Starting now. <coughs> no, no outside view. 
<laughs> yeah. Look at that. That looks scary, doesn't it? Is that normal? Seems like I did something wrong. That looks so cool though. I think those are the flaps and uh, we're coming cutting it pretty close to this mountain. Oh yo 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 That's very scary. Is that normal? That didn't seem very safe. You know that switch LED near Master Caution? Uh, in fire... Warning, that's the recall 6 pack thingy. <coughs> switch LED near Master Caution, this guy. Let's go up more. Let's go 10,000 for now. Ah, look at these clouds, beautiful. Master Caution and Fire Warning, this one. So yeah, this one, right? So that's a button. Oh yeah. It does, it does depress when I do that. Clean up, please. Yeah, it is a SID. But it seems so weird. It is a SID, but why would it allow me to go through that? Like, here's where we were that U-turn there and this is where the mountain was that's so close goodness do we need to de-icing let me turn it on because it's getting pretty starting to get cold actually 11 degrees yeah let's wait for it for a bit <clears throat> okay double check Checklist, we are good. Departure, clumsy 002, 7,500, climbing 10,000. I think you should also say where you are, but uh, I don't know where we are currently. <laughs> so we'll hope that they have radar contact with us. Okay, land gear lever, turn that off. Auto brakes off, and uh, terrain radar, we can turn that off on the first officer. Alex is hunting. <laughs> Just blowing out all the dust. No right? Thousand to go. <clears throat> what are you hunting, Alex? Climb up to fifteen thousand. Let's go fourteen thousand. Oi, don't you level off on me. Go up, go up. There you go. It was just a bit confused. Landing lights can go off. Runway. Turn off lights can go off. Seat belts. You guys can go and uh, go to your. Uh, go to the comfort room now. Cabin pressure. That should be good. I'm going to skip that. Recall again. Still not sure what that's for. And we adjust the track. That's a very long waypoint. We have LNAV, we have VNAV. Why did it seem like we are... That seems like a very weird uh, waypoint. Is that normal? Where are we? Well, we're not here anymore. To go. <clears throat> Let's go straight to 370. That's how you fly in Alaska. <laughs> I know, right? It's so weird. Let me double check the legs here. EF in Mitum. 
207. Ah, yeah, I think it's going to make us turn around or something. If we go to plan mode, yeah, that's the one. From EF, we go straight to Mitum. Why don't we just do now? Let's say, let's assume that air traffic control tells us come C0102, direct Mitum. Direct Mitum, come C002. So we do something like that. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. Erase that. Straight to Mitum. If I manage to click it, that is. There you go. Because that's a bit of a wasted effort right there. Going, looping all the way through. Yeah. Forgot to set your overhead altitude. Cabin pressure warning after cruising at flight level 360 like 10. Oh, that, that is an effect, huh? Because that is setting the uh, the pressurization. That's why you need to set that. Now I know what that does. <laughs> Good. Good point. Can go to standard altimeter now. Same for the standby. Look at that banker. That is beautiful, isn't it? Lovely. The view of those mountains is just wowzes. Didn't go off until you were like at flight level 200. Your <laughs> poor passengers. <laughs> so the oxygen masks probably came off for sure. There we are. There's the airport we came from. So close. 20 miles away. Somewhere over there. Fuel. That's bad. No, that's that's a problem. It's just the that the center fuel tank is empty now, so we can actually turn off the fuel pumps for the center. No problemo. So we close these. I think we're good here. It's weird. I can't see myself here in this chart. Yeah, we can close that now. And we can start looking at uh, what's the IKEA code there? I forgot. Charlie Echo Yankee Golf, I think. No? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check that later. Maybe I can check in the chart. Oh, that's C. Yeg, Charlie Yankee, Echo Golf. My bad. There you go. Don't be needing to check that later. Yes, that's the one, Scott. One. You knew it. No, something about press pressurization problems. Oh, yeah. If you watch the first Premiere 1A video I had. My guy actually blacked out. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was a disaster. Yours looked fine from outside view. Okay, let's go and I can turn off track IR now. Relax a bit. Man, those, those clouds, huh? That's my favorite uh, kind of uh, scenery right now when the clouds actually kind of merge or how do you say blend with the mountains it's such a nice view man how would Austria how would Switzerland look like we'll have to fly there sometime I don't know how different they are though in terms of the procedures the rules 
most likely different transition altitude but that should be listed in the charts anyway just the heading the 4k version looks so good indeed yeah I'm using the 4k version as well looks so nice and I also have the real PFD mod which changes some of the colors on the primary flight display makes the this brown a bit lighter the magenta lines a bit lighter I think something like that we have a little bit of tailwind thank goodness where true airspeed is uh, 425 knots ground speed is 447 knots I'm not sure that's probably around 500 miles per hour and we're still climbing we haven't even reached our peak yet it's the stuff super scenic views <coughs> Let's go back to Navigraph for a bit. Let me double check where we are. Make sure that we're not getting lost or anything. So if we can show the route here. So the it actually knows where we are right now. Not exactly the same, a bit off. It should be minor difference if you zoom out enough. So that waypoint should be let's have a look. Mitum, that's probably Mitum. You can click it, it is indeed Mitum. <clears throat> and then we can put these guys so we can overlay the arrival so we have an idea when we're about to reach that point. I really like this feature, this overlay. So good changing the opacity as well S key up kit although from here it doesn't look exactly alike that might be a different scale right there because if I turn on the waypoint labels up kit is here that's the same but hmm BIMIC is not let's see maybe there is a some note there. SK2 arrival. Aircraft planning. Um, we're planning runway 20. So that one's not applicable to us. Try that. That's, that's not the same. <coughs> runway 20. Am I viewing the right chart though? Runway 202. That's different. Yeah, that's. I think that's a bug. Or maybe, yeah, because the star here, that's the wrong one. Look at that, it's showing link to chart 20-2, SK2 arrival, but it's for runway 2 and 12. That might be a bug right there. So we'll have to change it a bit. And remove that overlay. I wonder if I could change the setting. Runway to zero. <coughs> anyway, what I can do is I can go to this airport, open the charts list, go and check SK2 arrival for runway 20. That's the guy. We can overlay that. That's the one. There you go. So it's a bit manual, but you can still do it. And that's one that one's more correct. Yeah. Aircraft planning the RNAV runway 20 cross Omega at the, or above 7000. Yes. Although it doesn't say vectors, huh? It's a bit weird. Anyway, it's fine. Alright, thanks a lot, Trevor. Thanks for hanging out here and uh, catch you next time. <coughs> Have a good day. What's everybody doing? 
Everybody is trucking, flying, chilling. What's new in the trucking universe or uh, any new uh, games you've heard of? I still haven't tested out the Rescue HQ, I think is the name. It's released in Steam now, but I haven't been able to play it yet because, uh, because of this. <laughs> because of this sim. Just so good. Flying is so addictive. Thanks for the follow, Trevor. Appreciate that. Catch you next time. Okay, let's reduce the bank angle since we are at 30,000 feet now. Thousand to go. Let me just double check. Top of climb is indeed flight level 370. Okay, good. <laughs> what did you manage to buy again? New planes? Hey, scripts! Six months, man. Thanks a lot, really appreciate it. You should have the silver badge now, I think. Thanks for joining as well, man. How are you doing? GG. <laughs> Alex is hunting bears at night. I missed that. Are you hunting with Jack? There you go, silver badge. Or grey, depending on how you look at it. Man, that mountain looks so good with the icy snow caps and everything. We should have to take a photo of that. My goodness, that looks beautiful. How do we take a nice angle? That might be the mini shot right there. It like so. There we go. Fallout 76. Is that the, like the, the pure multiplayer Fallout? Man, that looks so good, doesn't it? Where are we anyway? Which mountains are this? Let's have a look at the map here. Lots in the list. No clumsy stream on Friday. Washington DLC Friday confirmed. <laughs> I'm doing it for you guys. Yeah, it's uh, I'm taking one for the team. Just so we get Washington uh, release early. <laughs> Let's go and check out the map where we are. Yar, Hey Jack! How was your streaming? I saw you were streaming Borderlands. Sorry you couldn't drop by. The MMO Fallout. The hated one with a score of 2 out of 10, wow. But you don't hate it, looks like. You have a different opinion. Ground handling, experienceistic in the Diamond DA-62. Modern twin propeller aircraft with G-1000, nice. Look at all these mountains here. So how is XP realistic? I am still using head shake, it's pretty, look, it's pretty fine with me. When there's turbulence, I get a little bit of sh head shaking. When there's... Uh, uh, whenever I land and I think the speed brakes also gives a bit of head shake I think came from there Juno and we are crossing all these mountains wow look at that that entire mountain range like that and we are going to make our way to Edmonton which is somewhere there that's the one we're going to they hate, <laughs> that's everyone said they hate Fallout. So you're also a fan, Jay. Nice. <laughs> Jack doesn't like it. <laughs> was fun. Is Borderlands 3 still set for sometime this year? I heard there was news. Let's have a look again at that Navigraphs chart. Where are we right now? So you can leave that in the map. That's part of the map now, those charts. 
super cool. It's going to take a while before we get to our destination. How long will it be? Do we need to fast forward or something? Let's double check. If we go and check the FMS, it says... Uh, at the top of descent, we'll be 600 miles away. We should be arriving at Edmonton 1746 Zulu. 1746 Zulu is... Right now it's only 1613, so that's in 1 hour 30 minutes. So that will be 11 already. That's a bit too late. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the ground speed for a bit. Going to go maybe, I don't know, 2, 4, 8 times, we'll see. Good that the hunter doesn't have friendly fire. <laughs> uh, maybe you guys should play something with friendly fire. It does give you lots and lots of stuff, XP realistic. But the value goes up with the number of planes you have as it's filling out small things that are missing in planes. Ah, I see, I see. I see. So with a fully built plane, maybe it's not that as, uh, like as, uh, it doesn't do as much. But for those planes which are lacking a lot of stuff, it fills up out those gaps. September 13, wow, that near, huh? Man, this looks so good. That actually looks even better. Super thick clouds. I'm actually not a fan of the super thick clouds. I like it more like this. Let's take a photo like that. So, so take a photo of that. And also one of this here. Love it. Alright. Now I'm happy. We can go and uh, speed up a bit. Maybe four times is enough actually. Scratch that, remove the speed first, because uh, with turning, the the ground speed increase doesn't play well with the banking. Always offshoots. <coughs> Is that the term? You know me. Me and terms don't get along pretty well. I really like uh, Fallout 76. It's very close to how you have modded your... Fallout 4 New Vegas, empty and survivalish. Really like a wasteland, huh? So, have I announced yet? I think I forgot to do that. Yeah, cruise, white medium, level off announcement. Let's sit in the. Keep that lights off. You're free to move about. Once you are seated, we recommend you keep your belts fastened. Thank you. There you go. Get up, keep a little closer. Meanwhile, please sit back, relax, enjoy the trip with us. In the meantime, check out your Discord. Is that me? Okay. Me. All right. Oh, that's so good. One sec. I'll, I'll just take a shot because that looks so lovely. Yeah. Winner. Alright, now we're straight again. You can speed up the ground speed a bit. Four times is, I think, good enough. <coughs> For now. Fallout 76 is not a Fallout game. We test the money grab and test MP beta. <laughs> what is thick? Uh, where, which one should I be checking here? <clears throat> yeah, four times ground speed is just the the right balance. A little bit of acceleration, but not too nothing too drastic. Doesn't make everything go super blurry can't say it on stream the channel name
You can't say on stream the channel name. of questions from Jay. New questions. Thanks a lot, man. How many are these? 30. Wow. <coughs> also, you said something about my house. <laughs> the name of my house. Is that the one? Where is that? <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, you're missing out. He's already hunting. The house of Jadars. <laughs> I think that's your house. Oh my goodness. So Trucking World has been pretty quiet recently and that's always a sign that something's about to come out soon. So when do you think they'll be releasing the beta? In the meantime, we can do some checks. So we are approaching LTEX, and if we compare our levels, <coughs> if we look at LTEX, LTEX is somewhere here. We should have burned around 12,000 pounds. No, 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 no. no. We have 12,000 pounds left, which will burn around 7.2. So if you look here, and we see, we still have 14,000, so we have a bit more. And we've used up only 4,000 pounds. 4,000 estimate is 7.2. Actually, we're doing very good on the fuel. That's probably ground speed. Yeah, the ground speed is also a bit uh, making things less accurate but the remaining fuel should be pretty much not too far away <clears throat> I do it more than you <laughs> you jadar in your brain all the time I just say it out loud <laughs> you need to play some ETS again what you had to remove it <laughs> Ortho first before trucks. Eliminating bears from the runway. That's the one. So yeah, trucking has been pretty quiet. I'm hoping the beta comes out soon. <laughs> well, the, the 1.35 comes out soon, so our modders can start doing their stuff. Also, Washington, I hope, comes out soon. Because I'm really excited to drive for Darwin. Ah, that looks good, doesn't it? Ah, flying over the clouds like that. It's just an amazing, it's just a surreal experience. Let me load up all this stuff. So let me load the arrival chart. SK2 for runway 20. Let me double check the weather first though. Is it still relevant? 250 at 5 knots? Yeah, runway 2 should be okay. And then. Approach Arnav Y, runway 20. Arnav Yankee, and also the airport. It's getting very laggy now. Clouds overload. That's the one. That's the chart. That's the approach. The arrival, rather. <coughs> Lily Diamond Hunter. <laughs> I'm going on vacation, so it will be out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's fair. Cruise. I'll be out on Friday. No stream on Friday, unfortunately. Man, that looks good. Party time! <laughs> I 
going to Lithuania. <laughs> Where they speak French. They also load it in the on my phone Navigraph can't get enough Navigraph <laughs> so good yesterday though they had some bugs the the app was crashing but and I, I figured it was like one of those new release bugs so I just slept for a bit I slept through the night and when I woke up this morning it's uh, it was fixed already. They already pushed out an update. Super fast. How much will we earn for this job? I think it's around six thousand dollars or less. Yeah, because it's quite far. It's good. Only thing is now the flight isn't loading again. Maybe the server is down, I don't know. The Navigraph server is down, maybe. Let me close the app. Start from scratch. Just enough for more six bag sick bags. Six thousand, four thousand for expenses. <laughs> Normal co pilot wage to your FSE account. Okay, there we go, it goes now it loads. <laughs> the the full payout is around the uh, Six thousand. Let's go and check FS economy. If I open a new window, you should, guys should be able to see it. Do you guys see it? No, you don't. One sec. that work not quite there we go now you see it we should be earning almost 7,000 but normally there's like a ground crew fee of around 500 to a thousand so we'll be earning around 6,000 6,000 plus but it's a 767 mile journey 129 people on board Look at that, how fast we are. More than halfway through already. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I like. <laughs> we, I have 390,000 now. The, P1, the Premier 1A is like... 800,000, I think? So I still have more than half to save up for. And uh, I'm waiting for... I forgot the guy's name. But someone is making a study level Premier 1A with all the buttons, AV tab integration on the MFD. You can actually look at the the maintenance aft maintenance bay, all the detailed things that P1D does. You can actually do it in the, the plane. So I'm hoping it releases. By the time I save up, I'm hoping that releases as well. There we go. Let me see if you guys can see that now. Maybe I can go to dark mode and maybe it will show up on screen. Does that show up? Yeah, that shows us up better. Super cool. And I should be able to enable moving maps here as well. So now it knows where I am. Is that blurry? I guess. Kind of. It's amazing what technology can do, huh? <laughs> so nice. Not easy to make money with flying airliners. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't earn us good. It feels so great. A lot of small 2020 passenger planes let you earn around 8k per flight. I find it hard to fill up the the premier 1a as it is i can take up to seven passengers i think and it's so hard to fill it up usually the airports don't have that many passengers going to the same place so 10 to 20 wow 
yeah the, the problem is I have my cam zoomed in so if I make it a bigger screen it's going to be pretty blurry and if I zoom out you see the entire room and you don't see me anymore so maybe I need a better cam first that's something to put on the list also something to put on the list I am uh, starting to think about a proper um, rudder pedal some proper rudder pedals because I, uh, I think it's going to make the immersion even more <laughs> amazing Tadius, do you have rudder pedals? how does it feel? so right now I'm using my CH Eclipse yoke it comes with built-in pedals so it's it's nice, but it doesn't feel like the real thing. Now Mrs. Clumsy can check from everywhere from her mobile. If you're flying again instead of doing this sort of stuff. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Must <then. clears throat> You have to see the whole room. Hmm, it's not clean. <laughs> It'll be very blurry if I make the screen bigger, so I, I don't like it. But yeah, when, maybe when I upgrade my camera. <coughs> House tour! <laughs> Not going to be a lot of touring around, it's going to be a very quick tour. Can we see ourselves here yet? Not yet. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Top of descent in around 200 miles. Yeah, still going to take a while. You have the Thrustmaster rudder pedals. The more affordable ones. It's much easier to hold the center line with twisting your joystick. Ah, I see, I see. We'll see. <laughs> right now, I'm still just. Uh, I'm not craving for it yet. I'm just mainly like brainstorming. <laughs> so, not yet that bad. Also, these guys, these aren't ortho photos. Yeah, we're flying to a generic scenery area. Can explain so frame rate is a bit better but graphics also suffers a bit the quality it's nice for taxiing yeah yeah that definitely helps when you're working on the checklist or doing the charts you can do the you can use your feet and also with the crosswind landings that's where I really want it because Mixing together the aileron together with the opposite rudder is a bit tricky. What about air bears? Air bears, I think uh, Alex will be hunting those. <laughs> what was that? Anything bears related, I think Alex will take care of. No more bears on the runway. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <clears throat> Yogi, boo boo, and boo, adios. <laughs> Fair enough. I see the top of descent now. It's coming in around 100 miles. 128 miles to be exact. But yeah, four times ground speed, you don't even feel it. It's not too much. It's nice. Hey! Hey, Mars! Thanks a lot, man. Wow, seven months. Time flies, huh? Really appreciate that. GG, man. I know I don't come, a lot, come in a lot, but I really enjoy your content. Thanks a lot for the kind words, and uh, thank you for the constant support. really means a lot. Appreciate you being here. And even so, supporting even if you can't be here. Thanks, man. What have you been up to these days? 
What is everyone watching now? You guys have any series you're uh, tuning into? We just finished the Kim's, Kim's Convenience. And it's very timely because Kim's Convenience is based in Canada. I don't know exactly where, but it's a really good show. Comedy show, 20 minutes only per episode. Very lighthearted, family oriented. It's nice. Problem with the landing is that uh, your damper is off at the time and the pedals aren't as smooth working as they should be. And without your damper, it's easy to lose control. Yours aren't good. <laughs> what are good pedals, by the way? I heard a lot about the uh, Logitech slash Cytec rather pedals. They're pretty famous. I'm not sure if they're as good as it they sound. But yeah. Let's do a fuel check. Uh huh. We have around 10,000 pounds left. Just check here. Check the charts. Where are we? Top of descent, we're not yet there. We are currently approaching El Tex, I believe. Is it? No, S, S, yes, something. Are we in the right. Uh, let me see, let me see. IQ U. S key? Up kit? Wait a minute. <clears throat> I'm not looking at something right here. S key, indeed. Yeah, S key. Ah, because top of descent is approaching already. Okay, that I got it. So at S key, we should have around 7.7... 7,700 pounds left. We have around 9,000 left right now. So yeah, it should be more or less intact. Okay. Go back to normal speed because we should be starting to prepare for descent already. Not good and good. One sec. I can't click on those right now, but oh, I can actually hover over them. That's not good. That's the thrust master, is it? That one is good. Oh, that, those are both thrust master. Jack has the whole setup. Oh yeah. Is it good? The Cytec one, Jack? This is nice. Can I actually just hover over the links and I can see the image already? I don't have to click it. Very useful for streaming. Okay. Landing in white bright. Announce the descent. Let's double check the charts. Decision altitude is... Uh, if we look here, we have our nav. Uh, now which one should we be using? What is RNP? 0.15. They're not too far apart. I'm, I'm going to go with this one, 2708. Or maybe the safer bet, 2794. Yeah, I, am. I still can't read all of this yet. I'm still confused about them. But, uh, I'll stick with the higher altitude to be safe, 2794. With the update, this also became faster. It's much easier to scroll through all that now. 2794. Okay, that's the one. Decision altitude height. ILS frequency active. I have not even set it up yet. One sec, guys. Get back to you. <coughs> well, we don't have ILS. We have RNAV, so we don't need that. We don't have frequencies to set up. But we do have courses to adjust. And let me refer to the chart for that. So runway 20 is this guy. Exactly 200 degree heading. So let's adjust that. 200 degrees in the courses. 
not really necessary but just to keep things consistent <clears throat> not very familiar with an RNAV approach not sure what I should be doing we'll see <laughs> that will let the passengers hear that <laughs> okay that looks good we are uh, let's see 16 miles away from top of descent I guess we can start uh, calculating for the landing have a good night Thaddeus thanks a lot for staying man appreciate you uh, hanging out here really helps catch you on discord thanks man <laughs> we'll need that we'll need some luck nice feel to them I might save up for that still getting some some game crashes in ATS even without the map mod hmm. interesting what's the reason what is the error all about Disney will buy out Logitech too. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Had several earlier tonight. Oh man. That sucks. Is that why you went to hunt? Is that why you went hunting? Okay, let's set the altitude. Start with the approach. Below flight level 190. By the time we reach S key, let's start with that. So let's set 190 here. Actually, it should be below that, so should be even less. Uh, let's say above 8,000. Let's go 8,000 straight off. Just so we have less things to worry about. Okay, so that means by the time we reach TD, top of descent, the plane should pitch down automatically all right well that's happening let's go ahead and calculate for the landing already so what I'll do is I'll open the app again I'll show it to you and let's compute the landing see egg get the stuff on me two zero that should be more or less the same I think gross weight uh, let's adjust the gross weight first should be one thousand liters less so that should be 129 gross weight and it sounds like we are starting our descent yeah there we go 129,000 Flaps 30, yada yada, okay. Yeah, I'll get back to that in a bit. Because we might need speed brakes. Yeah, normally we do. But uh, seems like we don't really. We are starting our descent. In terms of vertical profile, we are still right in the middle. There and there. So we are exactly where the plane is planning us to be at. Speed wise, we're also still the same. So we don't really need speed brakes. It's not yet. Hmm, okay. But yeah, let's just uh, keep a close eye on that. Unknown climate. Maybe it's NL related? Oh no, that, that, that's been happening all the time. They were occurring all over the map. Hmm, strange. Maybe it's traffic related when the certain traffic spawns. Was there a recent update in ATS? Yeah, look at that. Drag is not required or even below the speed limit. Okay, let's continue computing for the landing. Let me double check. The winds here at uh, Edmonton are 17. Oh crap. 170. No, no. 196 knots. Okay. <clears throat> what is 170 v250 variable so it changes direction something like that maybe 2986 altimeter let me set that up that's what I'm setting up there standby so when I switch it's already set the right number 
also do that for this one. Go back to standard for now. Right, and now we're below 30,000 feet. I can go back to 25 degree bank angle. <coughs> Sound or traffic's your suspicion. There was an update today. Oh my goodness. What have they changed now? No one figured it out yet in the forums. Can only play in windowed mode now. ATS and ATS. Ah, I wonder what they changed. Well, I, I always play in windowed mode though, so I guess I won't notice it. No screen resolution options. Dang it. Yeah, Jay never has any problems. I don't know why. He's very lucky with that regard. <laughs> it happens the same with me. Whenever I have problems, I never have that problem, Jay would always say. Super smooth sailing. Okay, let's set up this one again. Uh huh. So 129,000. We have uh, runway 20. Wind should not be too far away. Okay. Flaps 30. Okay. Flaps 30 at uh, 140 knots. Okay, that's the one. There you go. And in terms of auto brake, it also gives us something. It gives us different settings. Auto brakes 1, 2, 3. And that is the runway length that it uh, consumes so of course the higher the braking the less runway you uh, consume and the more is left for you so for us is auto brake one enough if i look in the charts if i look in the charts uh, 7500 is around this point maybe let's go auto brake two just so we have an allowance so auto brake one would land us right near Bravo 4, I guess, if I do everything right. But if I miss something, we might overshoot. So I'm going to go auto brake two just to be on the safe side. Everything good here? Yeah, everything good. Uh, auto brake two. There we go. All right, I'm back with you guys. 1.35. Open beta improved eye tracking. It's a known bug, SES has acknowledged it. Uh, which one? The resolution? Disappearing? Hmm. Weird, I wonder what they changed last minute. That is looking pretty good. Have I missed anything? Let's double check. Landing performance calculator that is done. Landing flaps V ref good. Auto brakes are good. Fasten seat belts 15 minutes before landing. Okay, what time are we arriving? We should be arriving around uh, 5 p.m. Zulu. 17:01 Zulu. 17:01 Zulu. Yeah, that should be around uh, 15 minutes. So everybody, your seats please. Bank angle. Bank angle. What the heck is our guy doing? That's a very sharp turn. Did I set it 30 degrees? Oh, that's only 25. That's 30. That's 25. Hmm. Anyway, that's fine. So we're approaching Upkit. If I look at the chart. Upkit. Should be there. Yeah. Alright. You can see it now. Nice. Altimeter. Yeah, I have it set already. And we're approaching 18,000. So I will be switching to the local altimeter on both the main and the standby. Good. Alright, I think that's it. 
and then the next check will be at 10,000 feet. Windowed mode and no resolution bug. Hmm, interesting. But is there any negative side effect when you have windowed mode? Because for me personally, I like windowed mode because it automatically enables the VSync. <coughs> I had some problems before with full screen and recording uh, frame rate, frame rate when recording. So I ended up going to windowed mode and I've stayed there since. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jack. Oh, the temptation is real. I'll have a look. Maybe there's a sale going on. Yeah, th this is non-orthophoto scenery. Still not bad. Nothing fancy. It's a bit flat, right? But not too bad. I mean, yes, it's, in some cases it looks a bit not as realistic. But yeah, we'll get there. That looks good though, with the clouds there. Blue skies, beautiful weather. Looks like we are closing in. Zoom in a bit. <clears throat> it's full screen right now, no resolutions available. That's the one. Hey, welcome back, Barry. Did you go for a train ride or something? Also, what is here? check glide slope let's turn that on there you go let me align the heading there you go okay <clears throat> 8,000 feet we are close fast approaching 8,000 feet we should be above 8,000 by Epsol at 7,000 in Omiba and at 210 knots, so we probably will have to break soon. Why is my guy still at 300 knots when I'm almost at 10,000 feet? That's so weird. That is so weird. Is there no 10? Is there no 250 speed limit in? Uh, oh, there we go. It's a bit of a last-minute deceleration. So let me aid it with some, some speed brakes. Do you guys know if there's also a 250 knot speed limit below 10,000 in Canada? Surprised SCS didn't release another update this afternoon. Yeah, to fix it, right? Maybe it's a bit more complicated than they anticipated. There's our final approach. We should be reaching, yeah, that's a 10 mile marker from the runway. Looking good. Yes, there is, due to flying moves. <laughs> there we go. Let's continue our deceler deceleration. And now we've passed 10,000 feet. Turning on the lights. Let's go and go through the checklists as well. Okay, terrain radar. Ouch. For the co pilot. First officer. Right, and then we contact air traffic control. What should we see at this point? Uh, let's say, okay. Approach clumsy 002. Left, no, no, right downwind, runway 20, 10 miles out. Something like that, because I think we are joining in the right downwind. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> if that makes any sense, I don't know. Thousand to go. Thousand to go. Let's go and lower that. Seven thousand. Okay, now I can remove speed brakes. Should be good at 210 knots. Heavy tab. From here, we refer to the approach charts. Missed altitude is 5,000. We climb to 5,000 and then turn. Well, we head on straight. 
to hampo for in, any missed approach okay the final approach fix is 4,000 looks like and from there our nav should take care of getting us lower supposedly Ongul is 4,000 yeah something like that I think okay so once we go past Ongul I should set the missed altitude at least that's how I understand it Moose? Where? Where? <laughs> still in Alex is still in hunting season. Getting, getting on a train in one hour from your place is impossible. Not too many trains in your place? Man, it's not really cold here, huh? 21 degrees. That's almost like Singapore. Well, not really, but uh, pretty close. Okay. Actually, I should start to uh, configure already. Yeah. We're approaching right base. So let me go flaps 5. That should limit the speed a bit. Do we need speed brakes? No. We're good. Let's apply some speed brakes. we have a lot to lot of speed to cover diesel point right there should be fine yeah vorlock approach that is not applicable but missed approach altitude is uh, close nearest train, train station is a bit far ah I see I see <coughs> so good do you have visual of the runway I forgot to look to the right well we can look now there it is I think is that the one probably lovely okay speed brakes off don't need that anymore once we go past 4000 once we go past uh, which waypoint is that Ongul I'll set the missed altitude to 5000 and uh, if everything is set up correctly the RNAV should be taking us right down to the runway more or less so now I'll go to the airport view and so we have an idea where we are once we land <coughs> game crashes are no doubt your fault enabled normally reliable modes yeah there's probably something we changed last minute and uh, the normally stable ones are now getting affected thousand ago okay so it, it since this is our nav I don't think I have to hit warlock or approach I think it should capture that virtual glide slope soon if I look here. I think so. Final approach. What's P? Point? Ungul? It should work like that. But we will see if it works. <clears throat> Runway heading. 200. 200. There we go. There it is. Runway 20. It did capture the... What is that? The localizer? The RNAV thingy. So now I should be able to go up to 5000 in terms of missed altitude and I should still be descending. I think. I hope. <laughs> I hope it works. Okay. Landing gears down. Edmonton traffic, clumsy 002.
three mile final, three mile final, runway two zero. I forgot what I was going to say, and it's not going down actually. Dang it! Yeah, I'll have to remove this one. I'm still not sure what it does. A bit high. We're super high, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm missing a step there in RNAV. It's not capturing the slope for some reason. Arm the speed brakes. Recall. Yeah, landing flaps. Taxi lights on. Good. And that's so high. Not sure if we can manage to make it up. I'll get back to you guys in a bit. That's super sharp, I know. And that's super fast. Minimums. That's very far away. Goodness. One hundred. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Oh my goodness, that's so far away from the runway. Let's hope I have enough runway space. Reversers. Speed brakes deployed. Power will be fine. Will be fine. 80 knots. Reversers off. And let's turn in here. There we go. Easy does it. Why is there a plane in the middle of the taxiway? Flaps up. Turn off lights. Uh, the strobes is so hard to adjust here. Go there. Auto brakes off. Get back to you guys in a bit, okay? Speed brake lever is down. Alright. This is also what I don't know. Like, in a normal scenario, when you have air traffic control, do they really like. Do we have to stop after the runway, after you turn out, after you clear the runway? Because I guess you would have to get clearance for the taxiing. And right now I'm just going straight like this to like this one. One sec guys, huh? I'll get back to you in a bit. Let's turn on the APU, so many things to do. <clears throat> and we're almost there. Yeah, the rest of the stuff is just cleaning up. I'll do that after we park. Get that sink rate alarm when you do dishes. <laughs> yeah. How oh, when he says 80 knots? The checklist says 60 knots. But yeah, that makes more sense. I turn it off at 60. Let me see what the checklist is saying. Closed less than 60 knots. It's a bit different. Is this the parking we're looking for? I'm guessing that can work. That should be okay. Close enough. Look at that. Yeah, I'm not sure what the lines are, but we are right on it. So I'll take that. <laughs> Thirty degrees for two days, goodness! And now it's seventeen. Wow. Okay, I, I wish it was seventeen here as well. But yeah. So I'm not sure I missed that R nav approach. I still have to learn that. I ILS is super straightforward with this plane, but I'm not sure in R nav how that capture takes place. I guess I have to wait for something before I w went and uh, set up the missed altitude. Probably had to wait till. Uh, I'll have a look at the replay later, but maybe I had to go past Uncle before I set it up. 
I probably set it too early. Pro parking. <laughs> Lucky parking. Thank you. Right. Generators are on. Not yet, but now they are. And now we can uh, turn off the engines. And now we can open the door. Good. Isolation valve on. You bleed on. I still don't know what the isolation valve is for. Does anyone have a layman's term definition for me? Seat belts can be off. Chimes are off. Fuel pumps can now be turned off. Hydraulic pumps off. Window heat as well. Trim air. <coughs> Anti collision lights, turn that off. Flight attendants, prepare doors for arrival, please. Cross check and all call. Good cabin lighting, white bright, I think. Yeah, and then we can open the doors now. Good. And now we can unload the passengers and now we can say finish flight. There we go. That's it. It isolates things. <laughs> yeah, that's a very vague name. Does not describe the thing at all, huh? Okay. What else? Okay, that's good. Terminate the flight leg. And close the cargo doors. From here on out, it's mainly cleaning up stuff. And then we'll have a look at the replay. See how high up we were. That was a bit scary. Let's turn off the lighting here. Uh, there's mode selector. Turn that off. We'll be back with you in a second. In a jiffy. Uh, turn that off. There you go. Mm. And final one. There we go. And now the plane is fully shut down. And close the door. That one. I wonder how they jump over. It's like Tomb Raider, Lara Croft uh, maneuvering right there. <laughs> Must be pretty athletic to go this to go this route. It's normally for maintenance and safety reasons. They need to be closed. closed. Because when isolation valve is on, that's when your the plane is on the ground, and when it's when you have to when we when I start when I have to take off, I have to set it to auto. I'm not sure why. Battery isolator or split charge relay allows an aux battery to be charged by the vehicle system, yet not participate in engine starting. It also prevents the starting battery from being run down by your equipment when the engine is off. I'll have to reread that later. <laughs> Google for the win. <laughs> Let's have a look at that landing. So I want to see... Oh, I can't see anymore. Everything is off. Now this is a real uh, eco-friendly plane. Can fly with everything off. <laughs> yeah, the, air, the, the replay feature doesn't have a very detailed uh, system. Doesn't capture all the variables. So here, landing gear down. Flaps set. And then Arnav failed me, or I have failed Arnav, however it works. And here is where I go manual. I deep dive into the runway. Oh my goodness, look at that, super scary. <laughs> and then I start pitching up. Not center line at all. I'm guessing that will still change. There we go. Adjustment. Minor adjustments. Shadow is now approaching. 
and now we flare a little not too shabby I'll take it and reverse or something I'll take it not as smooth as I hoped but hopefully no injuries you can easily even see the rudder moving there it's nice let's get that landing from here a good bombing run right there <laughs> yeah but the VOD only shows the interior view <laughs> this one the, the shaking This is also always what I look for whenever I ride on a plane nowadays. I look for the window seat and I try to record this uh, entire sequence of landing. I don't know. It's so good. Reverse thrust off and later on the speed brake should lower automatically. I think, supposedly. Right now though, they did not actually do that interesting normally they would have to when you start putting a bit of thrust I think they automatically go down supposedly but now they didn't so I had to lower it manually he stayed on for a long time there we go now they're down need to watch the movie airplane is it good or is that sarcasm We're not allowed to record them when it's landing though. And nowadays it's not so strict anymore. It depends on the airline. Some don't allow phones. Some just, just some allow it if it's in airplane mode. Because I've seen like flight attendants see me recording and they don't really do anything about it. So they it's not at least not illegal from that point of view. Yeah, depends on the country. I remember Singapore Airlines, I think, has the most relaxed rules. I remember Sou China Southern is the strictest one. As in, you can never use your phone the entire flight. You can't even put it out even in airplane mode. You can turn it on. But I think Singapore Airlines, you can actually leave it. Um, I can't remember. But yeah, you can have it on the entire time. Just airplane mode the entire way, I think. It's fine and there we go so I have to practice more the RNAV approach I'll have to watch rewatch some of flight uh, deck to sims vids let's see was well, still only 10:30. Wow I actually made that ahead of schedule ahead of schedule yeah so airplane mode and capturing video no problem <coughs> Let's turn that off. And we are good to go. Let's see how much we earned. Alright, now we don't have cash. If we look at log, we have 6,200. Not too shabby. Three hours in game time. 692 in ground fee but everything else has been paid for already so yeah that's a good deal look at this i flew yesterday or i think uh, earlier this morning la to oregon uh, la to portland and it took longer almost the same distance and i got paid way less for it why is that it's just less paying maybe less passengers yeah but that was nice I think this is my first flight outside the US. Yeah, going to Canada. So maybe next time we can venture into Europe. I don't know. If you guys have suggestions for me where you want to go, let me know in the flight sim channel in Discord so we can uh, weigh where, you, where we would like to go next. All right, Scotsman. Have a good night. Clumsy trucking. Base from the engine. It's good, right? <clears throat> hey, Gaming Oliver. 
we just landed. We just finished our flight. Landed safely, kind of. <laughs> we are parked neatly now. It was not that pretty on the approach, but we, we managed. Not too bad. Thank you for joining. We are about to end the stream now, though. A bit early, I know, but... Uh, that's the, the perks of having a fast flight, I guess. <laughs> I'll catch you guys next week. Uh, so as I mentioned, there will be no stream on Friday. No trucking, unfortunately. But I should have something coming soon. If ATS is, uh, is going to behave, and if it doesn't crash on me, like how it does currently with Alex, I'll record some stuff for this week. And uh, we should have something at least. Are you not playing Chu Children? <laughs> I uninstalled it a long time ago. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you for uh, uh, sticking through. And uh, I'll catch you guys next week. <laughs> Sir Mods. Only thing is I have plenty of uh, mods that I did not uh, really think hard and long about. So I'm not sure if they'll conflict, but I'll test it. Anyway, I should have something. I did not turn Ladies that off, did I? We'll be taking off in just a few minutes. Flight is in this no, place for cabin for departure. Off. That guy's just practicing his speech. Anyway, thanks for the company. Catch you guys next week. And I'll catch you guys on Discord. Have a great weekend, guys. And I'll share some photos if uh, it permits. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Alex and Jay, for moderating, as always. And uh, thank you, Jack, Scotsman, if you're still here. Gaming Oliver, uh, Scripps, thanks for the resub. And uh, who else is here? Barry and whoever else is watching. Thanks for joining, guys. Catch you next week. And I'm, uh, I hope more people get into Flight Sims because I'm so addicted to it. <laughs> thanks and bye-bye. And if you have suggestions, let me know in the Flight Sim channel. Thanks. Have a nice day. And good night. Bye-bye, everyone clumsy flying. Thanks, Jay. <laughs>